Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Gungans and Droids, across our beloved empire to today's initial gameplay review of the Grand Inquisitor, or some like the call currently, the Grand Failure. Man, I have a lot of things I need to share about this character in regards to the character, the gameplay. It's non territory Omicron, non datacron vibe, which is important to caveat here. It's probably going to be solid in territories. But with territories only being five times a month, you're not going to get a lot of mileage out of this team, perhaps. It's seeming like a Boba Fett sign of Django team, potentially. And outside of territories, it's a death by a thousand cuts team when it does beat something. We have been able to beat, for example, low Relic General Anakin Skywalkers. Isn't that crazy that Relic 7 is considered low nowadays? But we can also somewhat compete with B-level tier teams. But for a legendary character that was had several months of buildup, several stay in the galaxy several heads the game is in a bad place right now we even look at the metrics the other day in terms of revenue galaxy was just falling off big time and on top of that don't even get me started on the legendary event poorly made low tier quality for this amount of time that we were waiting for uh it just seems like they don't care anymore and on top of that we were advertised that this is supposed to be a team that was supposed to go up against jedi master kenobi and commander ahsoka tano and then last second during the kit reveal after many months some people spent on that hope that premise that we were going to be able to keep up with Jedi Master Kenobi, Commander Sokotanos, and Territories. All of a sudden, they caveated it, saying it'll beat Jedi Master Kenobi, but not with Commander Tano. And I take a lot of problem in that. So, with the Inquisitors, you can't really expect the Inquisition to show up, but you know what you also can't expect? Gary, hit it. Citizens of Analderaan, are you tired of playing mobile games that just take your money, give you no communication, and give you no content to play? Well then, let me tell you about our planetary sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends! We have the brand new Deliana from the High Elves faction, and she is one of the strongest support champions in the entire game. You can get Deliana 2 for free, and all you gotta do is log in and play Raid for seven days between now and July 20th. When you're in game, type in the promo code MYDELIANA to instantly get Deliana to the maximum level of 50. There's there's a ton of stuff going on in Raid this month. Special events every single day, including an entirely new event for the Summer Solstice. So click the link in the description or scan my QR code, and you'll get bonuses worth $30. All this treasure will be waiting for you right up here, but you gotta be quick because these rewards are only available for the next 30 days. So why don't we just go start rolling some gameplay for you guys here while we talk about a few things. So this is all of our gameplay testing from the initial stream that we did. Thank you guys so much for coming. Always oh, so much fun hanging out with you guys. There's a card in the top right hand corner. If you need more of a guide to unlock the Granite Quiz, I made a bunch of infographics, made a more condensed version of my unlock process to hopefully help you guys out. Overall, let's just talk about the legendary event first before we get... Uh, too carried away with the Grand Inquisitor uh, initial review, which we, that's going to be the most of our conversation for today. Very disappointed in Capital Games. Six months of buildup. It just it, they, it's coming across that they legitimately don't care. And we can't just use the excuse, oh, it's a Star Wars game. It'll make money. It's making money, but the game is falling off the chart. It's falling behind the competition. We made a video about that the other day. That excuse that it's Star Wars isn't really carrying as far as it used to a couple years ago. <sighs> really disappointing. The event was just annoying. It was uncreative. So basic. It looks like they whipped it up in two seconds the other day. Um, and this also is going to lead into the conversation here in regards to the Grand Inquisitor. And why should you care? Now, if you get this character several, the road, several years down the road because you just, you know, that's the last thing you got. You got it free to play. Cool. This isn't something right now, even assuming it's going to be great in Territories, I can't even sell it to you guys. This is something you should drop now and get because it's not even being sold. The counter Jedi Master could have been Commander Sokotano. They could be wrong, just like the Tai Echelon. They said it wasn't supposed to beat the Executor, but guess what? The Kyber Club, within like the first hour, we figured out how to beat the Executor with it. So who knows? We might still be able to beat Jedi Master Kenobi and Commander Tano inside of Territories. And this really leads to the big thing right here. Uh, congrats, by the way, to Sith Lord 66 for unlocking Starkid while we were screwing around of Grand Inquisitor. And I, even though this is a meme right here by X Post, Post Facto Malone, I love the name, by the way. Truly. Star Killer is just a way better bang for your buck investment. You got three out of four of the characters, amazing. And to be honest, Grand Inquisitor kind of feels like a marquee character outside of territories where he lifts the Inquisitor faction a little bit similar to how Iden Verso lifted the special forces. The Ashendar lifted scoundrels, Kyle Katarn lifted rebel fighters. But you're getting three amazing characters rather than a dumb faction. It's not really doing all that much. And on top of that, Star Killer is a top 10 team in Grand Arena, which is a 12th time it won't 
it's going to nine times a month now but you know, let's not get bogged down to the details you know what i mean it's more frequent than territories and it's also top 10 in territory wars because of uh, juhani so top 10 in grand arena because of his omicron top 10 in territories because of juhani as well as mara jade omicron why would i care about grand inquisitor if it's not designed to be jedi master Kenobi commander so katano and it's only for territory wars yeah i'm assuming it's gonna be jedi master luke skywalker I can see just from outside of uh, territories, I can kind of get close to beating a non Commander Sokotano Jedi Master Kenobi team, but why should we care? And that's the point I'm getting at. So, just initial impressions so far, based on all the gameplay and the initial testing, Grand Inquisitor just does not seem to be as good of a package as Star Killer. I mean, you could say Second Sister is a good pilot if you have the TIE Interceptor, and you are 1000%, right? It is a solid ship and necessary to compete in the end game of Galaxy Series, but mile per mile if you're comparing two cars you probably want the car that maybe is a little cheaper to get it's gonna give you way better bang for your buck and it's gonna work in a variety of situations rather than just one situation like the grand inquisitor and that's the main preface here this team let's focus more on the grand inquisitor and the team with initial gameplay testing and again one more time because i know people sometimes like to come back saying oh you said this character is trash because i wasn't using him in the game mode with the omicron but i care about reviewing things outside of the game mode and the omicron like star killer like a lot of these other characters you want to know how good they are so you can make the, the assessment what are you going to get the most bang for a buck out of outside of territory wars with the relic eight couple relic sevens and a couple relic fives on the team with the grand inquisitor the best thing i was able to beat was a relic seven general anakin skywalker that didn't have great mods not the ideal lineup and it was still a long battle all the battles i do and it feels like a death by a thousand cuts it's just it's the first time when i was testing a legendary like me and my audience are like falling asleep like i'm sitting there it's like whoa i'm streaming i probably should wake up a little bit here it's a really boring team to play with outside of territory wars without those omicrons without the data crons locked into place on this particular team going up against relic nine general anakin skywalker's fives which is becoming a lot more common at least at my level just getting slam dunk darth revan slams dunks on this team the best a tier non-galactic legend team we were able to beat was commander luke skywalker a little dicey a little messy not really crazy I, maybe inside of territories it'll be a lot clearer but that is something it's i feel confident if i have to go against cls i could use this team and that's probably the best thing about this team is that i can maybe beat cls with a good degree of confidence otherwise we're kind of eh, to kind of put it in better perspective it feels like a marquee character that lifted a faction like the Ashrandar. Fun fact, you know, it gets timed out behind Ness potentially. It feels like a, a Genosian proper. Genosians can beat Ness, but you have to make sure you time the right hit with the spy. When Ness drops the bonus protection, you're going to run into the same problem with the Inquisitors. You got to make sure you time out Ness so that the second sister can pop the big hit because otherwise there's not a lot of damage. Although Grand Inquisitor does do some decent damage when you pop off the right hit. So her as well as the Grand Inquisitor are the damage dealers, but other than that you're not getting a lot of plays going but the cool thing is inside of territory wars he's got an insta kill capability and i'm sure that's gonna be great when going up against those some certain jedi master kenobis and jedi master luke skywalker teams that are running around out there otherwise i can outside of territories i'd maybe give this team a b minus c plus grade i don't see it being top 10 competitive in grand arena i'm gonna just assume right now we'll wait and see this week and we're gonna have our first territory war with him we'll do a follow-up showcase what it's like kind of like boba fett sign of Django. we did our first initial review it's kind of like all right he's okay and then afterwards we did a bit of a more review, review but if this is a marquee character i'd be cool fine it's a marquee character it doesn't need to be an a-level team but for a legendary team i expect it to be kind of at least somewhat more competitive with some of the legendary journey stuff out there especially more of the older ones like darth revan it's commander luke skywalker not necessarily expecting an epic confrontation level although you know you do need some high relics to get involved with this event here that that's kind of what i was expecting out of this team but in terms of a couple of mechanics that i did really like about this team um the coolest thing about it is that the grand inquisitor has a really nice ability block there's lots of ways to get speed onto this team and that's before looking at other things him getting extra bonus turns all these other things so you can open with a really nice play because the inquisitors they kind of need it they all have some pretty nice base speeds to work with and for example when you got purge on the end which it's going to happen automatically because of his lead if he is leading the inquisitors he starts up with a really nice ability block and that's going to be probably critical to take on things like general anakin skywalker inside of territories in a more consistent manner because you cannot run captain rex hypothetically land the ability block and while well, the team just sits around 
and does nothing. And if you can get the Grand Inquisitor, the insta kill, Gigantic and Skywalker, boom, nice. So again, I can, this is video is more of a hypothetical sense of what it looks like it will do in territories. I think Gigantic and Skywalker, some Jedi Master Kobe, and maybe it's Jedi Master Luke will work well because he also has anti ability block, which is great. Not being able to get ability blocked right off the get go from Jedi Master Luke Skywalker is going to be nice. And again, inside of the territory war situation, when you have that Omicron, once there's six stacks of purge on something, you can have people ignore taunts and then you can target the characters you need to go after. And that's kind of the cool thing about it in that sense. So again, not saying this character's useless, but expectations were poor. They overhyped this character and this particular faction. It feels just like a marquee faction and it doesn't feel legendary and not a lot exciting. And I think the main thing is Territory Wars is just, yes, it's got data cons in them now. And it will, that is probably gonna be more important over time. It's just still not frequent enough to really justify the effort and cost of going after this character. And that's the biggest problem I think that I really have with it still. It might be just my bias. I do firmly believe that Grand Arena is just more important than Territory Wars. Territory Wars isn't nearly as fun. That's just my opinion. And that could maybe alter my opinion. If you're someone that's a Territory War meathead, which a lot of the top end whale competitive guilds, they really care about Territory. Some care more about Territory Wars then Grand Arena, they make it their core focus. This is gonna be probably the team for you then, to give you extra opportunities to go around Jedi Master Luke Skywalker. Because we do have off minute counts of Jedi Master Luke, Luke Skywalker. But one, we don't see a lot of Jedi Master Luke Skywalkers on defense. And two, you know, we do have some off minute stuff like General Grievous and Darth Revan. I'm gonna assume Grand Inquisitor is gonna be cleaner than those. And those extra few banners, uh, repetitively over 50 teams you gotta go through in a particular zone, could make all the difference. To get the win so if you're in territory wars you love it i can see this being the case i do want to wrap up with this in our initial impressions <laughs> before we talk about a few more side points here i find it funny that we have the whole shock t meme when originally said oh the inquisitors are meant to counter shock t lead and it really was it was miserable even with the inquisitors outside of territory wars it was uh pretty miserable we did win once but we lost like three times against shock t bad badge so that kind of puts it in perspective that it's not quite bad badge dash rendar level I would say maybe it's kind of like a little under Kyle Katarn and Rebel Fighters outside that particular game mode. But again, I just want to preface one more time that it's probably going to be good in territories like Boba Fett's Sign of Django, but you know, no one really makes a big fuss about it because it's like, okay, you know, we can beat Lord Vader without Boba Fett's Sign of Django. But I think this is incredibly important right here because this Omicron right here, as you see right here, if the target enemy has six stacks of purge and is a Jedi, you instantly defeat them. And the Jedi, Jedi enemies defeated by this can't be revived. And that's gonna be important for Jedi Master Luke's team so Jolie can't get revived. And hopefully for Jedi Master Kenobi teams. And then we have all these other Omicrons that we are gonna do and we're gonna be testing out of Territory Wars this weekend. The constant purge repetitiveness that goes uh, that comes back like Darth Vader with damage over time, being able to ignore taunts, it's gonna be kind of nice. And of course, Compassion leaves a trail on here. Being able to do bonus damage to enemies that have protection up on them with purge as well. That's targeted specifically towards Jedi Master Kenobi. One thing I fear, and this is going to tie into another complaint about Datacrons. I'm sorry, Datacons. Oh, so my, uh, sorry, I, I messed that up there. My biggest concern is that they're starting to design teams and characters that need their Datacron counterpart. So locking viability that should be there, it's, uh, I don't know how to put it, because I put, we play mobile game. But it's like, imagine if you're playing, uh, I don't know, the old school Super Mario 6. I don't know why I picked that. One of my favorite games. But it's not, it's not really the full game. You have to pay extra to get the, the rest of the game experience. I hate that. I dislike that. And I hope that's not what Siege is intended, especially for this season, when we have bonuses that are tailored toward the Inquisitors. Maybe for them to beat Jedi Master Kenobi Commander Soak Town or just reap their full potential, they need to get the Inquisitor bonuses. And I hope to goodness that thought did not fly past their mind because that is a boneheaded decision to start gating mechanics behind these data cons. So let's hope that's not the case. We will be doing more of a in-depth review at a further point right now. It's hard to get an in-depth review until we actually test it out in its particular game mode. But overall, disappointing the character, disappointing the legendary event. Doesn't feel very legendary in general. And I just, um, this just kind of goes to CG. This year has not been good so far. Not a lot of good stuff. I think they had to kind of talk about this for six months because there really wasn't anything else to talk about in Galaxy of Heroes. Starkiller, I think, is going to be the better chase. And I think we're going to have a lot more fun if Malgus comes shortly. But stay tuned. We're going to have more gameplay and test this guy out. 
sometime this weekend so stay tuned i'm not sure we're gonna use them on defense or offense i'm sure i'm gonna see a couple of grand inquisitors on defense so we'll see how it's like in territories but for right now i know we're in a new era where not every character team can be amazing everywhere but i would at least like it to be a little bit better inside a grand arena that's i'm still getting used to this new era we're in where you need datacrons to get the full potential you need the omicrons they only can be good in certain game modes I think the problem is I have a really big bias towards Grinner, and I think a lot of you guys do too. Correct me if I'm wrong. Please put me in my place if you disagree with me. Would love to hear counterpoints, and if you like the facts, I'm happy. Glad you like it, but it seems like right now, most people aren't too satisfied with what CG has done with this team. But we'll see if they keep pushing this team down. Or so. Thank you guys so much for coming out. You guys are always absolutely amazing for hanging out with me and dealing with this Inquisitor testing. Leave a like, comment down below, subscribe. You guys are all amazing. And you know what also is amazing is Empire? Because we always say that it's great to be <laughs> in the Empire today.